Oh. Hello. Dang, I thought you didn't have Instagram. Look at the little Instagram logo on the left. And a Twitter? And a Twitter? My boy on the social medias? <laughs> it just came with the app, dude. It just came with the web browser. <laughs> uh... It looked clean, though. <laughs>what's up everybody welcome back to another one piece card game today we're talking about will the one piece game last bum, bum, right. bum. <laughs> so today my mc my assistant on the track we got caesar bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Just like John Cena, you can't see me. Bum, bum, bum. I don't know I'm doing this, but hello, <laughs> it's me, Caesar, and then obviously the great, the only, Giovanni. Yes, sir. Welcome back, you guys, to another One Piece video. Today, we're going to just jump right into it for you because we got a good one, boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Caesar, you want to start us up or should I? Yeah, I don't mind. So I think with any card game coming out, I think an important question to ask is, will the card game last? And to look at that, I, I have like a, a set of criteria, if you will. I put it through the computer and like let a super AI analyze all of this. And for today, we run the algorithm for you guys. We exactly. Put it the <laughs> we put the work in. We put the hours in for y'all, <laughs> for you. <laughs> So right now there's a few factors I want to look into. Uh, I would say the first one is, as you know, the card game's already out in Japan. So I would like to look at that specifically for right now. How's the card game doing in Japan? And I'm not a money expert when it comes to card games. That's our residential Giovanni right here. So I'll let him oh, take yeah. over that one. Yeah, I love looking at the profit ratios and the profit margins for these card games because you know we're all we're all here. We love it. We love playing the game for fun, but at the end of the day, we want to have some sort of an investment in what we're spending our money in, right? So how will we do that right now? We're gonna look at Japan. It's a worldwide card game, but Japan's getting it early, so now we get the advantage here to see how well it's doing in Japan. And then you can read into that and see how it'll do, you know, here in America. So I think the best thing we should talk about right now is definitely the cards first. And maybe, what do you think, Caesar? The boxes first or the cards? I think, let's go with cards. Let's go with cards because there's an interesting fact about the cards that, I, that you told me and I, I find interesting. Okay, okay. So if you guys aren't up to date on what's going on in japan it's actually insane so if you've ever played any other card game or anything you'll know that usually when the market gets saturated right like say like two weeks that's my favorite number two weeks three weeks after the initial release not pre-release right initial release that's when the cards are the cheapest right but <laughs> in this case it's done the complete opposite. I, I've played Pokemon, I've played Dragon Ball, and I've honestly, I've never seen this. The cards are going up in price. <laughs> I swear to God, they, they had a second wave release, and now that means there's more of these cards in the market, right? But instead of going down, the prices are going up. We have Boa Hancock going for over $500 for the Altar. We have like, the Nami altar going for like hundreds of dollars, right? Like literally insane. The prices are going up because people can't get it. Like it's just, I, I like I know the pull rates for the box either you get one altar or you get the seeker rare, right? Or you get the seeker altar per box, right? There's one in every box, but still just insane that these cards are going up. And 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 now Bandai even will segment into the boxes, right? Bandai has even had a second release on these boxes now, right? So after the first wave, they're, they're sold out. You can't even find a pack, right? Now, they had a second wave and it's gone. And the boxes have gone up in price too. So if you don't know, a booster box in Japan will actually sell MSRP, which is like basics price, right? 
for forty dollars USD. Right, that's how it translates U.S. to J Japanese. I don't know what the currency is called over there. Yen, baby. I'm your local oh. weeaboo for that. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, if you if you bought a uh, Japanese booster box for forty dollars, it's now worth over a hundred and sixty like dollars, somewhere between one hundred and forty, one hundred and sixty. Like if you're lucky, you'll find one for one forty, but basically they're going for one sixty. So that's quadruple almost what the msrp is so investment wise insane like if you were smart enough to buy a couple of these boxes and hold on to them you you could crack three sell one and make your money back it costed you nothing to play the game yep to play uh right. to play just a little bit of devil's advocate you could also argue that the reason despite the two-week rule you like to say of the card prices keep raising might also because a lot of countries are exporting the card game or importing the cards from japan to their country to sell over here i know there's a lot of u.s markets that are already like selling them just plain old japanese cards but i i still understand the sentiment because like despite that i think the cards are raising way way higher e even when the card game is supposed to release this month right yeah, September 30th, the starter decks are coming out, but Romance Dawn, the actual set, will be dropping on December 2nd. Gotcha, gotcha. So we got a little bit of time before the main set, but still astronomical. The 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 price margins for these, insane. Yep. And speaking of Japan, I think it's important to note that One Piece, and not just in Japan, in the world as a whole, is probably one of the biggest IPs when you look into One Piece. Like, I'm pretty sure it's the number one most selling comic slash manga in the world. It uh, Its name power alone is stronger than Dragon Ball, but I can understand how people would argue Dragon Ball is more mainstream. But I think in like, when you compare the names, the IP, and in terms of value, One Piece does have one of the biggest uh, footings in Japan and as a uh, global, global market as a total yeah i think yeah. it's good to give credit where credit's due i mean oda did say his inspiration was from dragon ball which is awesome but just being real like one piece literally is in the guinness world record book for most manga sales like that's just like it, what how's that saying go like the student surpasses the master bro like i love <laughs> dragon ball i love dragon ball till i die but like actually just insane bro one piece <laughs> is better cough cough I didn't say anything. <laughs> but yeah, so looking in not only in sales, but in name star power, I, I guess it's what people say alone. I think that is going to definitely help the case for One Piece. Like there is a small possibility that once it goes overseas, I'm not saying it will flop, but it is a possibility that we won't see the crazy sale numbers that Japan is having as of right now. Because obviously it's Japan they 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 love one piece it's it's a matter yeah. of fact it, they love one piece exactly and and honestly all of this is our speculation we don't want you to go like super hype and be like yeah oh we got to go out here and buy it <laughs> and please please don't be a scalper please please don't. <laughs> it's your mf's fault i couldn't get my rtx 3070 asshole i waited I for 2 years Hey, listen, bro. If I gotta spend like eight hundred dollars to play my law deck, bro, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> let Let's all have a healthy community out here. All right, no scalping. Like, let Let's just we'll make our we'll make our investments, but we don't have to be like you know like we ain't gotta be like sideways about it, bro. Let's all have a good time. <laughs> don't be the Judas to my Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so with next up, I think we should talk about who is making the card game and as most of you know it's bandai so i think it's important to look at does bandai have a history of card games and it does um i'll let geo talk about digimon because i know nothing about digimon all right so digimon is actually bandai's second ever card game i'm pretty sure <laughs> but digimon has actually exploded also if you know anything about card games or are on TCG player, you'll know the Digimon in like the shortest amount of time has exploded. Like it's actually even on TCG players top five list now for like most sold on there. Cause it's doing like a lot. 
So uh, Bandai really like uh, you know they they worked out all the kinks through the first game and then Digimon came out and now that's the great thing like One Piece is now Bandai's third yep. card game. So that realistically all these previous kinks of first time card game making are gone. Literally, we're gonna get the creme de la creme, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> definitely talk about its second, now it's third. Let's go to its first, which is the Dragon Ball Super card game. Now, yeah. I don't know if it's the first ever card game Bandai's made, but I at least let's say in this modern era, right? It's yeah, it's their first card game. Their first modern era card game in case they made a previous one. Dragon Ball Super is exactly what Geo said. It definitely had its kinks. Look at the first set. It was so slow to like get a game. It was so slow. Imagine this for any uh Dragon Ball Super players. Beerus had a stipulation you won the game if you reach 16 energy. Granted, yeah. it was an energy ramping deck, but that's how slow the game was, right? Yeah. <laughs> like it, it had its kinks, but like I said, it was one of its first modern games that it made, you know. And now, like, Dragon Ball is going strong. It's about yep. to start its new uh, format with Zenkai. It's bigger, stronger than ever. You know what I'm saying? So they, they've already made it through, what would you say, like 20 sets of Dragon Ball? Yeah. <laughs> so that just proves they know how to make a healthy game that can last. Like, it's been going... We're, we're coming up on the fifth anniversary now for Dragon and, Ball. And I think Dragon Ball has helped Bandai in, in a regard of trying to make a balanced game because correct me if i'm wrong geo but does Dig the digimon if you are aware of because i know you're not a digimon player either did it have any like tier zero decks at any point if you know uh i like honestly i can't i can't comment because i'm gotcha. not that deep into digimon that i'd be able to say okay so for the most part i've heard digimon is a healthy game and i know dragon ball super had many points where it is a very unhealthy game if anyone remembers yeah. like back in the day of set four uh Dragon harutagon yeah. yeah harutagon for the longest time even not like recently but in the middle of its life uh dark broly was just like a ruler of all things any wish deck when wish was rev relevant was also like not any wish deck but like namekian wish was that the broken one uh, yeah, they, they had a couple they had a couple moments like like you said BT4 is with the triangle format with yeah. Harutagon Cell and SS3. Yep. And then I think the next one it went through with with the bad phase. I don't remember where uh like uh what's it called? The Super Dragon Balls, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was like tier 0. You yeah. didn't even you watched your opponent play oh, solitaire. Oh, yeah, the Super Dragon Balls. That's <laughs> that, right. That's Dragon Ball lost a lot of people honestly. That tier yeah. 0, no, no one liked playing against that. And while and, that, and while like uh, the game continued right i i heard it has like it's very healthy like right now i heard dragon ball super healthy was there still some kinks in the oven of course because like i said dark broly i think is one of our most recent examples of like if you don't play dark broly it's almost a automatic like loss you just give up but as of right now like i anytime i hear a top 16 regionals or whatever it's usually like a very diverse cast of leaders yeah <laughs> Uh, they, they've definitely fig fig figured out the kinks, but of course there's been some rough patches along the way But it just shows you like how strong the community is with Bandai in general that people yep. stick around You know what I'm saying? Like even if there's a shaky format, you know, but that's that's the one amazing thing I do want to talk about Bandai Unlike Pokemon unlike Yu-Gi-Oh unlike any other card game Bandai listens to their customers I, I'll never forget, there's this card called uh, Bardock's Raiders Warcry. I think it came out for the third anniversary. Everyone wanted that card, right? Because uh, on the anniversaries, they give the people like their favorite cards that they want, right? Yeah. Really? So, they, 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 it was a different Bardock. It was like Bardock uh, Great Ape, right? And everyone, and everyone was like, no, we want Raiders Warcry, right? We literally got them to switch it to Raiders Warcry. Like that is insane. I've never seen they they switched the whole advertisement. Like the <laughs> next week, it was a whole new. Oh, here we go. We gave you Raiders War Cry. Like, bro. Let me tell you insane. something, Geo. At what cost, though? The community got Raiders War Cry, but the guy who messed up and put the other product got fired. <laughs> uh, okay, and I guess um with that we've talked about sales. We talked about Bandai's own history with making card games. 
I guess let's look at actually the One Piece card game itself. What would you say the state of this card game is at, at Geo? Uh, for set one, you got to remember set one is like I've always said, it's the most dangerous of all the sets in my opinion. They have to make it slower just because, think about it, if there's like a tier zero deck, there's no other cards to pull from, like yes. from different sets to counter it, right? So for where we're at right now, like even with blue, you know, blue's still topping. So blue is topping. It, yeah, all, all the colors have been able to top at their own regionals. And mostly, more importantly, all colors are usually in the top eight, top four, even sometimes, like, which is insane. That's about as healthy as you could hope for a card game. Yep. So, so far, so good. <laughs> I agree. I think there's definitely some kinks. For example, Gio mentioned it, but he also uh, helped it because there are tops with it. Um, Blue, I think blue is probably the worst color, universally agreed. But I also don't think it's so bad, like, you know, it's never going to top because it is topping. And I think green, while it's universally agreed, the best color, I think almost every color, once again, minus blue, has an answer for it. Red can easily minus or KO, and purple can do the same, except minusing, obviously. Yeah, and really the, the main thing you like to see here is that even though there's these really busted cards in green and stuff, there's a lot of ways in each color to counter these cards, which is even yep. more important. So, so the game, uh, how do I say this? The game promotes higher thought play. Is that like a good way to say it? Like it, it you the need game to be galaxy that. brain to play this game. Exactly. <laughs> like, 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 no, but literally when you're, when you're in a tournament, bro, you want to be rewarded for outsmarting your opponent, right? Obviously, like, oh, I, yes. I know yeah. my opponent's going to be playing this card, right? So let me not walk into his trap. Let me set up a counter so I don't get hit by his thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thinking ahead in, in being rewarded for it, that that's the sign of a good card game. You know what I'm saying? That it's not like, oh, he played this card. There's nothing I can do about it. Now I auto lose? Like, nah. You know, so it, 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 the game rewards higher thought play, you know? <laughs> And I think uh, that's what makes One Piece a little more unique. Even though like anyone can save energy or mana for a negate, I feel like because you leave, your your energy is also uh, combo power. There's at points where like, yo, he left two dawn up. Is it because like he has a combo? Is he bluffing? Even though, like I said, you can bluff in almost any game. But I think uniquely with One Piece, because if you usually had a negate in hand, you would add it to lead. Sometimes you can just straight up bluff your opponent and be like, I don't I can't risk this attack. You know? I'll save for next yeah, turn or something. Especially with like cards like in blue that they can bounce stuff back to your hand. I, like I like if they leave an energy open, I'm not playing a three or less. Yeah. <laughs> so just, just with the chance that they might be able to bounce my stuff back, you know. <laughs> so. Exactly. Exactly. So, I think, I think with that we 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 kind of talked about everything we wanted to talk about. Do you have any closing opinions? If you feel like the game will succeed or fail, Geo? uh honestly we're just gonna have to wait and see i i, I really do i i believe like honestly i'm gonna be investing my own money in this game like i'm so i do believe in it i think it's gonna be a fun game we've play tested now on untap you know what i'm saying we can see it's it's not like one color is busted that it's gonna ruin the whole game like yeah exactly and then honestly, just the, the sales in japan make me feel even more confident about my investment you know what i'm saying so it feels like something that i could be secure in with my money that i'm gonna spend it i'm gonna get to enjoy spending my money right and then at the end when i'm ready to you know move on or sell my cards or you know i need to sell it for to buy a house or something right like my cards will retain some value which is what we're all hoping for in a card game you know at the end yeah. of the day we want to have some sort of an investment you know in what we're buying and i for me i think the card game well hopefully i believe it will succeed i think right now no matter what color you choose it's all uniquely different and personally i've been playing blue for a lot then i switched over to red and then i switched over to purple even though purple is not busted or like crazily in cart in like a mechanical way i purple just made me have fun just something about ramping and just felt good to me and the ramping is not even excessive like in other card games like in early uh dragon ball super they had to ban some ramp cards because there were some like yeah. crazy times where you could like go up to six energy and like turn four turn three or something yeah. 
exactly if just if you saw the right cards or yeah. especially because you know what like that's just how it's going to be in one piece too like one one piece right now we're drawing one card per turn right exactly. and i think that's honestly how dragon ball was at the jump too yep just for safety purposes they don't want nothing going crazy right but uh yeah eventually you're going to start drawing more and more and more cards right so with cards that let you ramp for, for using cards in your hand it, it just it got busted so that's why i think now for bandai they said it that you only can have a max of 10 dawn yeah. So there's no no one like you can ramp to ten dawn faster than your opponent, sure. Yeah, but, but they'll eventually get there. You can't, you can't have twenty dawn where you're dropping two ten drop kaidos. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's yeah. mitigated by the minus effects, you know, the minus dawn effect. So it, yeah. it pairs well. And I would also like to say I think the one draw is very important that you mentioned because like uh eventually the game will go faster. I believe the game will like turn into almost Yu-Gi-Oh! where it's a search heavy based card game and i think as of right now like i said there is problems with blue but sometimes you can just you can win with blue not just only because like luck but with skill but like you can just get lucky drawing the right cards and as a card game i think you know having luck involved is pretty good yeah and then even better you know using your skill because i yeah. think that's definitely how people are winning with blue obviously they're, they're i are playing their opponents yeah, I'm not saying for a card game you need all luck. I'm saying like it's a card game. I you would need yeah. use 80% of your brain and then pray to Jesus for the other 20%. <laughs> exactly. Just become Yugi Moto, have the heart of the cards, and exactly. you, know, you do, you do, fine. You do okay. great things. <laughs> and with that, I think it's both yays that this game will succeed. So um I think that's the end of the video. Do you have any closing thoughts, Giovanni? uh nope i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh make sure to follow like subscribe follow our socials you know we're definitely going to be keep posting these videos for you guys thursday sunday stay tuned notification bells and you know we'll catch you on the next one Bye bye <laughs>